evening, Lizzie boys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanted to make another Lizzie's board vlog, mostly so I could talk about the total drama thing I mentioned in my Draculaura review yesterday, but also because I wanted to talk about some of my favorite underappreciated Monster High dolls. I thought it would be fun. So, with all that said, let's get into it. By the way, I tried to fix her hair a little bit. I trimmed her bangs a slight amount, tried to get the point a bit more. Um, I also washed her hair so there's no longer any product in it. It probably looks weird because I just kind of washed her and then let it air dry, so probably have to brush through it again to make it look less chunky. Yeah, see, way better after brushing it. There we go. That's a Draculaura. But yeah, she doesn't matter. She's in the thumbnail, but she doesn't matter. Let's talk about some really cool dolls that I don't think get enough appreciation. Right out the gate, one doll that I've always really liked but I feel like nobody ever talks about is Dawn of the Dance, Gulia. This is, without a doubt, one of my all-time favorite Monster High dolls, and I cannot explain to you why. I just adore her. She has the same bangs that the new collector Rochelle has, but done correctly. Her red glasses slay, the dark lipstick eats, everything just works. I got this doll by chance. Um, I won her like in a bid on eBay. And by I won her, I mean my mom did because I had to go to school that day and I couldn't be on my phone in school because the high school that I went to had the worst connection known to man. I actually still don't know what was wrong with that place. All of my classrooms had like no internet connection. There was one classroom in the whole school that did and it was the gym classroom. Cause it was like, it was like a combination of like a health class and gym. So the classroom portion, which is where we spent most of the year because my teacher hated us, I was fine with it, but a lot of my class hated it. We'd hang out there and sometimes I would have connection there. But uh, yeah, my mom also won me Kaleo and Deuce, so they were in the same bundle. I think I made a video about it. But yeah, that Gulia is my number one pick for very underappreciated doll. Again, I hardly see anyone ever talk about her. When you see people talking about Dawn of the Dance, it's usually about Draculaura. So, you know. Opening the window a little bit to allow some more light in here. I think that kind of helped. Yeah. Anyway, another really good doll that I feel like gets overshined all the time because of when she came out is Shriekwreck Draculaura. Like, this is just a legitimately very pretty Draculaura doll. I only have her because I found her at the flea market in this condition. I think she was only, like, somewhere between 2 to $5. But... This is a really nice Draculaura doll. The only reason people don't like, like, no, I think people do like the Shriekwreck dolls, but this doll does get overshadowed a lot, and it's because she was released during G2, I think. Please stand up again, Frankie. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I also have my Shriekwreck Laguna back there. She's watching and dreaming, you could say. So, um, yeah, yeah, very good dolls. I really like... The Shriekwreck dolls. Probably one of my favorite Shriekwreck dolls, though. And this is the one I see talked about the least. I don't even know if anyone, like... I don't even know if most collectors own this doll. And if they do, they should post about her more. If you are a doll collector watching this video, which you probably are, and you own this doll, you should post her and talk about her more. Shriekwreck Goliope is so underrated. I never see anyone talking about her. I got this doll when she came out. And I'm happy that I did because, again, I really like her and I feel like nobody ever talks about her. She's really unique with the blue hair and I do think it's Polly. It doesn't feel very good. And she has got a pretty face as well. <laughs> I like her earrings too. Just everything about this Goliope works for me. And she's got this cute purse, which actually looks just like Vandala's purse, but like a little bit larger. It's kind of funny. I actually had my Goliathe in storage for a few years because her stand just didn't work. No matter what I tried to do, she wouldn't stand on it. Honestly, I feel like all of the 18-inch Monster High dolls are underrated. Like, I love Frankie. I love my regular Goliathe and my Claudine. I also have Elisabeth and Draculaura, but they're in their boxes and in the closet. Before someone calls me a liar... What the fuck? Why did you fall? You had no reason to do that. Okay. It's behind my pull-up doll. <laughs> yeah, uh, my mom bought Alyssa Bat when she was in stores, and my- no, I went out of my way 
to get Draculaura at the flea market, because my flea market guy had her in his store for 15 bucks for like three years. I don't know why nobody bought her during that time, but I'm glad they didn't, because that means that I was able to get her for $15. She doesn't sell for that anymore. All right, fellers, guess what I just got in the mail? It's my Skultimate Secrets Frankie. I'm very happy about them. The door broke. The door is, <laughs> the door is broken. Um, I don't care about that because it's just the door of the coffin, but you know, it's just like a big like, what the hell happened here? Like, how did this? I mean, I guess they're not that well attached when you think about it. It's just like a singular hinge joint, so it can easily just be popped back in. But I just am very amused by the fact that it's not attached yeah it's just not attached okay where did i leave off before that um i think i wanted to show you guys another doll that i really like that not many people ever talk about so let me do that and i don't know maybe it sounds insane of me but one of my favorite claudines of all time is the mall monsteristas one like i just think this doll is really adorable i really love the split hair that they gave her I like her face, I like her green lipstick, I like the dress as basic as it is. The blue belt I feel like clashes a bit, but I do like it, and her shoes are just this gorgeous sculpt. Like this is a beautiful sculpt. But yeah, that's like one of my favorite Claudines overall. Um, there's definitely more that I have, and I'm sorry if you guys hear my dogs barking in the background, they just do that sometimes. But I'm just trying to pick ones that are like genuinely underappreciated. And I don't remember where all my stuff is, so. Turn on the lamps so we can see more. And now, let there be light. Am I right, Lizzie boys? I think that every single Toralai doll is underrated. Every single one of them deserves way more love and appreciation than they get. Do not make her more expensive than she already is, though. I will hunt you down. Um, nobody on that shelf. Um, no, nobody there either. Oh my god, come on, there's gotta be somebody else I can talk about. Oh yeah, Ghoul's Fair Scara. I have always absolutely adored this doll. Like, look at how cute she is. I love the pink lipstick. I love how there's like one bit of pink on her dress to tie it all together. Her boots are super cute. Just, again, like it's a super basic doll, but I really love her. Scara had a lot of good releases. Um, The only one of her releases that I still don't have is the Freaky Fusion one where she's dressed as Toralai. And you would think I would have that because I'm a Toralai fan, but uh, no, I don't. Why don't I have her? Okay, let me talk about the Total Drama season to you guys. Um, so if you guys don't know, Total Drama released a new season and I found it in a Mega Drive link. If you want to find it, it's um under this one video I watched about the uh, gay couple in the season. Because Total Drama did this cool thing where they added a canonically gay character. His name's Bowie, and he's cool. I liked him. He was probably one of the best parts of the season. He was, like, one of the most likable characters. In a way, he was sort of, like, the antagonist, if you could call it that. And, um, I liked him. He was good. He was probably the best part of the season, one of the only characters that I actually cared about in the end. So throughout the season, um, gotta keep it real with you guys, I only watched two episodes. The first one and the last one. But I did see a couple compilations, like, of uh, Bowie and his boyfriend's relationship. Again, that was cute. But it only takes up seven minutes of screen time, which is, like, super disappointing. I definitely feel like that should have been on the screen for a bit longer. Um, there was only 14 episodes in the season, though, so I guess there wasn't much that they could do. Meh, I don't know. But, um, what else happened? A uh, scary girl, the one everybody liked. Her name is Lauren. She's like the Harley Quinn wannabe. And every time she talks, she sounds like this. And it's annoying. It's kind of annoying. I wanted to like her because her design is really good. But her writing was just so... Something I would write in 12th grade to try to be... 12th grade. When I was 12 years old to try to be edgy. Like she says stuff like, Oh, the pit should be full of snakes. And like, oh, I hope everyone gets injured and killed and stuff like that. She just says stuff like that. And people are like, oh, she's so funny. Like, yeah, it's a little funny the first time. But I don't know. After a while, I feel like the novelty wears off. So, yeah, she was fun. I liked her. I like, I defend women's wrongs. So she was nice. Um, I liked the hockey guys, the two hockey players. They were fun. Um... The winner of the season sucked. Her backstory made it so predictable because she's the only character who like shared their backstory. And her parents trained her to be on Total Drama. 
So the fact that she was the winner of the season just pissed me off so much. Oh my god, it was so bad. Also, if you're wondering why I picked Laguna for this, it's because she's a big fan of telenovelas, which uh, sometimes are reality shows. My grandma watches a lot of reality shows. My Honduran grandmother, who is eerily similar to Laguna. It's kind of funny. The worst character was this dude who called himself an alpha male in the first episode. I can't believe he didn't get voted off first for that reason alone. He was obnoxious. Um, they changed the intro song, and one of the lines is, I'm here to slay. Um, Chris and Chef's voice actors were recast, which majorly unfortunate because Chris's voice actor can still do the voice just fine, and I'm sure Chef's can do because he was in Total Drama Rama for years. Chris's voice actor was in that too voicing Jude from 16, so yeah, overall just a lot of weird decisions were made, and um, the most annoying character was this girl named Millie, who she's like, I'm here to do research on my generation, talking about Gen Z and stuff, and she's like, every time someone from my generation does something dumb, I write it in my book, and it's like, You could just tell she was written by a 50-year-old. That's about it, though. Like, overall, it's a really mediocre season. I would compare it to Pocketoo Island in terms of the cast being really underdeveloped, undercooked, and the winner being boring. The season had less of a focus on romance, at least, because most of the time, every single season of Total Drama has to do with that, and I'm not sure if I like that. It was, like, kind of fun to have all the shipping and stuff. There were only two couples, this one girl and her boyfriend who had broken up because he cut the brakes of her car. But they get back together. They get back together, even though he cut the brakes of her car. Like, it's... it's insane. <laughs> and then there's Bowie and the guy he ends up dating. That's cute. Like, that's cute, you know? But, um... Yeah, that was kind of it. So that's my review of Total Drama Season, um, I guess technically seven, but it's also a reboot. The season ended with a dance party. Like an early 2000s movie. It ended with a dance party. Like the way Despicable Me ended with a dance party. So yeah, that's how the movie, that's how the season ended. Chris was also way too nice. He wasn't an asshole the way you would expect Chris McLean to be. Mm. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too negative. Let me know what you guys thought of the season. Um, yeah. I think I'm gonna call it there, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm gonna order Skultimate Secrets Laguna soon. I really like her. Yeah. So, as always, I hope to see you in my next video. Hopefully, we'll have some more news to talk about soon, and yeah. Bye!